Hey foes and friends, I'm happy to have you back for part 2 of the map animation tutorial. If you missed out on part 1, just check the link in the info box top right. We are going to copy import the map that we made with Blend Internal to our new Blend file and save it separately. Go to your original Blender internal file, select the map object and press Ctrl C. The whole mesh and its materials are now saved in the buffer. Open a new blend file, delete the default cube and press Ctrl V to import the map. The object is now appended and not linked, so any changes to it won't affect the original. It's just quite an easy way of appending meshes. Now make sure that you're using the Psychus render engine and set it to your preferred rendering hardware. I'm also changing the frame settings to 60 FPS for smoother high quality animation. Now go to the sublinks tab and change the render samples to something around 256 samples. That might not be a huge amount, but it will suffice for our animation and you can also use the blender denoising feature if you want to. To speed up your render, you should consider decreasing the light bounces, but this might also affect your final render output quality. Play with these values to your personal preference. Just to be on the safe side, go to the Scenes tab and enable Use Environment as we are going to light the scene with an high dynamic range image. For this scene, I will use an HDRI from the Blender Cloud. I think it's available for free on Greg Sol's website also. If you're going to download it, maybe consider donating to him. To set it up, let's go to the Compositing layout. Make one of the windows your rendered preview. I'm using the top window as my node editor. Select the materials section in the node editor to change your material and now go to the world tab and select use nodes. In the world tab you select environment texture as the color input of your shader. Now just look for the HDR or environment texture that you want to use. Okay, let's start with the map material. Select your map object and create a new material. I personally really like the principal shader, which is a lot easier to handle. Please note that I have Node Wrangler enabled, which allows me to use a couple of shortcuts in the Node Editor. You can enable and search it in the Add-ons tab in the Preferences. Sliding the metallic to one will give us a super reflective material, depending on the roughness value. For this very simple material, all we do is plug in an image texture into the roughness. Now press Ctrl T to get your vector inputs. I'll be using the pattern texture that we already used in part 1 of the tutorial. In this case we have to use the alpha output as the color output is completely black. Now just change the scaling of your texture and finally plug in a color ramp to give you a little bit more control. You can invert the black and white values with this little button and if you want to you can add a mix RGB node to control the overall values of your texture. So here's a little explanation for the roughness. The roughness input describes the microsurface of the object. White gives a value of 1, which means it is rough, and black, 0, is smooth. If you want to know more about the different maps and its inputs, then just follow this link. Okay, now to finish this very simple scene off, I'm just changing the color of the map and adding a background plane with a simple diffuse shader. Finally, I'm going to blur my HDRI to get smoother reflections. You will have to download BWide's note pack. Uh, the link is in the description. After the download, go to Append and look for your note pack. Go to the Note Tree folder and look for Image Blur. Then hit Shift A and look for it in Group. Perfect, hook it up and now just increase the value to something that you like. Let's jump back to the default layout and press Shift A to add a simple circle. Let's scale it down and move it somewhere on the map where you consider your destination. Extrude it outwards and recalculate the normals if you see that the shading is a bit weird. Run a solidify modifier and a build modifier on top of it. I'm using a value of 40 frames for the length. If you want, you can get an opening in there as I did. Now just arrange your start and destination objects and here I'm scaling them down based on their individual origins. 
Next up, put your cursor at the starting point. Now create a Bezier curve. Let's arrange our Bezier curve so the starting point is in the center of the start object. Arrange the route the way you want and use the handles of the curve to shape it. Now to animate the line, we are going to use the bevel factor. It's available after adding depth to the curve. You can increase the quality of your curve by just increasing the resolutions as shown. Alright, so changing the end value will change the length of the curve. You can animate it by hovering the mouse over the value and pressing I. The keyframe will be locked in the position of your timeline cursor. Now open up the graph editor. As we have to fix one small problem here though. Let's assume you want your animation to be interpolated linear, so the line is always moving in the same speed. You can press V for the curve controls and T for the interpolation controls. So revert the Bezier line to zero depth, then press Ctrl, Alt and C to convert it into a mesh. Perfect, now go to the user preferences and search for the add-on Mesh Tools. You can just search by the term loop and you will find it. It is in there by default, now just enable it and we are done. Now with the curve selected, go into edit mode and after pressing W, look for your loop tools. With all vertices selected, select space, which will make the spacing between the points even. And there we go, just revert the curve back to a curve by pressing Ctrl Alt C again and now you can animate the curve the same way as before. And this time linear will mean linear. Unfortunately the resolution options of the curve do not work properly now, but you can use a subsurface modifier to increase the quality of the curve. So now let's just animate as before and press T to control your curve animation interpolation. As you can see now the line grows at a linear speed. In the end I'm also adding an emission shader to the start and destination points. If you want the line to be spaced in between lines, here's how to do that. Delete the curve tab so it's not visually clustering. Now add a plane in the origin of the curve, select the plane and then the curve and press Ctrl P to parent the plane to the curve. If you selected curve deform, then the plane will deform along the curve. Add an array modifier and put it at the top of the modifier stack. Now animate the array count and voila. To have the lines only appear at the start, you just need to scale down the plane at the start frame to zero and have it appear at another later frame. Now you can experiment with the dynamic curve effects. I'm using a back effect which makes it rather neat and flashy. You can also have a single plane run along the curve if you move it in X direction so it will follow the curve. This might be different according to a directional layout. If you want to achieve the map outline effect as shown at the start of the video, here's how to do that. Select your map and in edit mode press Shift Alt C between two vertices to select the edge loop which forms our designated lineout. With your outline selected, press Shift D to duplicate it. Now press P to separate it. At this point, you can remove the double vertices in edit mode by selecting all points with A and then W remove doubles. Press Alt C to make it a curve and use the extrude option in the curves modifications tab. Now add a solidify modifier and you're done. Put the new object outline a bit below the landmass to enhance the effect and add an emission shader to it. There's your fancy outline. To make it appear at a certain point, go to the Objects tab and look for Cycle Settings with the outline as the selected and active object. There you can animate its visibility. Animate the camera diffuse and glossy to make it appear or disappear suddenly. If you want to fade in, just add a transparent shader and a mix shader and animate the factor value. So just get a mix shader in there. Press Shift A, look for shader and then go mix shader. And as you can see now you can dial in the transparency factor. Next up is the blocky buildup animation. We need to first remesh the map object. Therefore select your map object, select remesh and disable the remove disconnected pieces option. The depth value is up to you. Now apply the modifier and go into edit mode. Press 1 for front view and 5 for orthographic view if you aren't using it already. 
press Z to get into wireframe mode and select all top vertices by pressing B and then outlining your selection. Delete the selected vertices. Now add a cube which we will use for our particle system. Put a wireframe modifier over it and make sure that you apply the transforms when you scale your cube by Ctrl A and then apply scale. You can move it to the side for now, just copy the name by Ctrl C so we can use it in the particle system later. Select your blocky map and put the particle system on it. Now make sure that we are using hair distribution and advanced. Check image from vertices and look for the amount of available vertices in the mesh. Insert that number as shown in the numbers section. Now go down to the render section and enable the cube as the emitted object. As we copied the name before, we can just paste it in via Ctrl V. Okay, let's adjust the size. You'll need to uncheck random to fix the distribution. Okay, finally I moved the cube upwards a bit, but essentially that's it. And check emitter in the particles tab if you don't want the emitter and therefore the base map to show. Also make sure that your build modifier is above the particle system to make it work. Okay, finally let's recreate the ink drop reveal effect. Select your map with the material and add a mix shader. Plug in a transparent shader in the bottom and your primary shader into the top socket of the shader inputs. Just press Ctrl T to get the image node and the vector nodes. Now select the ink reveal animated sequence, which you can download from my website. Now plug the color into the vector socket of the mix shader and the map will reveal itself according to animated texture. If it's not working properly, then UV unwrap your map and position the UV so it captures the value spectrum of your animated texture better. So create a new UV map as we did before in part 1. Just select the mesh and press 7 in edit mode to position the camera from top and unwrap by pressing U and then project from view. Now go to the UV or image editor and scale the map UV. Of course we have to make a newly created UV, the input UV also. So press Shift A in the node editor and then attribute and type in the name of the created UV map. Perfect, now when you scroll through the timeline it should animate properly. Thank you guys, this wraps up the tutorial but if you have the time just stay a little bit longer please. Ta-da! I've got a Patreon page. Ah, <sighs> another guy with a Patreon. But you know it's quite a cool system to support your artists. Anyways, this is the page and take a look consider it, maybe you would like to support me. And you get access to my 3D repository, including sexy images of my secretary. Dude, really? Hanelor, we talked about this. Do you want me to reinitiate Spank Tuesday? Okay. Oh.